Welcome back to season two of Go Marta Go. Get ready to dive deep with me into the rich and complicated culture of the heartland as we look back on our past and present and learn to live our best future lives together. Let's go. The United States has periods of its history that can be difficult to reconcile with surface level understandings. One such instance is the discussion of our first full-fledged civil war. Today, there are two battlefields designated as national parks in Northwest Arkansas, Pea Ridge National Military Park in Garfield, Arkansas, and Prairie Grove Battlefield State Park in Prairie Grove, Arkansas. On the day that Arkansas seceded from the Union, as the ninth of 11 that seceded, Arkansas had only been a state for 25 years. What should have been the start of Arkansas's silver anniversary celebration of statehood bled into four years of formal conflict between the United States and members of the Confederate States of America, a period of history that flayed open long-standing tensions that predated the war and forever changed the nation. I decided to make this episode of Go Marta Go intentionally because I have a confession to make. I don't like thinking about or talking about the Civil War. There's a deep soul pain that aches when I approach the topic, regardless of the audience that I find myself in. While I'm not a native-born Arkansan, I am a seventh-generation Georgian, the state, not the country. My great-great-grandmother was born in 1862, the last of her line who was born into slavery. It is miraculous that these fragments of my recorded family history even exist and much is lost, but what is not forgotten is the imprint it left on those who came after. As an African American and descended of both enslaved Africans and slavers who bred my ancestors as livestock, it's hard for me to sit in a room with people who talk about the good old days of the Confederacy and how we need to return to the good old fashioned Southern traditions of those times. Those were anything but good times for those whose blood I carry. But I am also a firm believer in facing what you fear or that which makes you uncomfortable head on. And so I decided to mount up and engage in an exploration of these two nearby battlefields. Military Park has a rugged beauty to it. And as I drove through the battlefields, it was a bit unnerving to see such beauty and know that many hundreds of people were killed or wounded or went missing on that fateful spring day. If you're curious about the details related to the Battle of Pea Ridge, I encourage you to consider making a visit yourself. And if you can't come in person, definitely check it out online. I'll drop the link in the description below. If you've been to the park before, let me know what your experience was like in the comments below. I'd really love to get a conversation going. The day of my visit was very hot, but when I came upon a sign that promised a scenic overlook a few yards off the main road, I had to check it out for myself. What I discovered took my breath away.
No, this is not a scene I snatched from an episode of Outlander. This is the state that I call home, and she is a beauty. I was very thankful that I could share this moment with my sister Aixa, who some of you may remember from season one, best adventure buddy ever. After taking our time to pay respect to the weight of the space and the moment, it was time to head back into town and process this first of my two battlefield experiences. My time of reflection brought to mind the words of another of Arkansas's daughters. When great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder, lions hunker down in tall grasses, and even elephants lumber after safety. When the great trees fall in forests, small things recoil into silence, their senses eroded beyond fear. When great souls die, the air around us becomes light, rare, sterile. We breathe briefly, our eyes briefly, see with a hurtful clarity. Our memory, suddenly sharpened, examines, gnaws on kind words unsaid, promised walks never taken. Great souls die, and our reality bound to them takes leave of us. Our souls depended upon their nurture, now shrink, wizened. Our minds formed and informed by their radiance fall away. We are not so much maddened as reduced to the unutterable ignorance of dark, cold caves. And when great souls die, after a period of peace blooms slowly and always irregularly, spaces fill with a kind of soothing electric vibration, our senses restored, never to be the same, whisper to us, they existed, they existed, we can be be and be better, for they existed. I originally planned to visit both battlefields on the same day, but I'm very glad that I broke it up into two trips. The ride up to Prairie Grove had a very different energy from my trip to Pea Ridge. The first thing I noticed was that there wasn't a whole lot of directional signage to follow. A few times my GPS even tried to convince me that a certain road was okay for my little car to drive on. We definitely did not agree. <laughs> my car likes pavement. I was thrilled to have such a beautiful day, such gorgeous weather, and I couldn't help but wonder why it was that I'd never made this trip in the nearly 30 years that I have been a transplanted Arkansan. Driving into town, I felt something grab a hold of me a bit. And when I eventually arrived at the gate, I almost ended my adventure right then. But I'll explain that in a little bit. you're probably getting a feeling for just how far off the main road this really is. I left 40, Interstate 40, and ended up navigating through a couple of different single lane roads. And I will tell you, if you are unfamiliar with driving on single lane highway, 
you do want to take your time in Arkansas because it can be quite curvy. And sometimes there aren't necessarily the best visible lines in the middle of the road. So I would tell you, I urge caution. Take your time. Definitely don't do this at night. Definitely don't do it in the rain if you're unfamiliar with the road. also took advantage of the fact that this happened to be a day when quite a few Arkansans were not going to be out trying to go to Devil's Den or any of the other kinds of parks that are also in the vicinity because a little thing called the Razorbacks playing Texas was going on in Fayetteville. So that's part of the reason why you don't see a whole lot of traffic uh, where I'm going because all the traffic I assure you was heading right up to Fayetteville to go watch that game. Remember earlier when I mentioned that I started feeling a little anxious as I was approaching town? Well, I was trying to figure out what it was that was bugging me. I had had a great breakfast, stopped off in Alma at a diner that I love, I made sure that I'd use the bathroom, I didn't have any of that kind of discomfort, so I was really trying to work out what it was that was bugging me. So then I started thinking, do I know anybody who lives in Prairie Grove? Do I know anybody from Prairie Grove? Um, I also realized that even though in the back of my mind I thought maybe I'd been to Prairie Grove before, maybe when I was a kid, maybe when I was in some band competition, the closer I got into town, the more I realized I'd never driven into this town, ever. And so, you know, I'm, I'm usually pretty bold about things, but I said, ah, well, let me just keep my head on the swivel. I don't know why it is I'm feeling like this, but I usually tend to trust my gut. And so I said, I'll just proceed with caution. As I rounded the bend and I was coming over to where I was going to have to make my left to get into the battle park, I, um, I didn't really know what to think. And then I turned and saw something at the gate that made me decide I was going to take the driving tour first. Uh, so I took the time. I, I took the time and drove the whole route. There was great signage once I got in there. It tells you each place where you're supposed to turn so you can complete the whole tour. And I really do recommend this. I, ex I recommend this whole experience. But I'm going to explain to you what it was that really kind of set me off when I first turned into the gate. I did the whole loop and I came back because I decided there was no way in the world I was gonna stop myself from having this experience just because of what I saw at the entrance. This is what did it, y'all. I am not a fan of groups like the Daughters of the Confederacy. And I assure you, they are no fans of mine. Now I'd done my research and I knew that many of the other Civil War era preservation projects they had played a role in with preserving things and I knew that they had been involved with preserving Prairie Grove Battlefield State Park but seeing that name on the gateway arch of the park threw me into an internal conflict like I haven't felt in a while. On one hand I wanted nothing to do with an organization that has been the catalyst for so much pain and confusion aimed at my people. On the other hand, something told me I needed to be here on this particular day for an important reason. See, I had chosen to come and have this experience on the 20th anniversary of the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001. So after completing the driving tour, I re-entered the park and went into the experience so that I could see the museum, walking into a building that had a Confederate general's name on it, did a head trip for me, but I was greeted warmly by the staff, which I expected. 
there are very few places in Arkansas that I feel outright unwelcome in on site. And this is, for the most part, a very friendly state. The museum was cute and well laid out, and I had just enough time to watch the informational video and take a quick spin through the gallery before they closed for their lunch break. It was here that my heart began to soften and prepare for the blessing that was to come. I listened to the stories of the witnesses of the battle and gained a new perspective on the conflict. If you haven't visited this park, I recommend that you put it on your list of things to do. There's something to be said for immersing oneself in the complete experience and perspective of another that helps with bridging tough communication gaps. I had always known that Northern Arkansas and Southern Arkansas had very different views on the practical nature of slavery. The Northern region was not great for types of profitable agriculture endeavors that thrived in the South, and I imagine many were upset when the mandate came from Lincoln in D.C. that Union troops were needed to deal with the Confederacy, and this conflict literally pitted families against each other in many ways, especially in Arkansas. What is clear is that the imprint of the conflict left on the community of Prairie Grove is very well preserved and visible from the schoolyards, businesses, and more than a few front porches today. The Civil War happened to all of our families, all of them, and a good many of us carry on our family wounds that are largely left untreated. I felt my family wound keenly the deeper I moved into the park, but I never expected to see something in this park like what I saw. I saw my family name on a plaque right there <laughs> and it made me feel a kind of way but there it is nonetheless but the more I walked the more I also saw the beauty that surrounded me in the park the rolling green hills the autumn trees preparing to shed their many leaves the squirrels racing up and down tree trunks making early preparations for winter. In the middle of that battlefield, I walked and I sat and I opened a part of my heart that I didn't know was under lock and key and I processed. I've been carrying a generational wound passed down the line and instead of treating it with the disinfectant of truth and light I've kept it packed away safely and pretended that I didn't need to deal with it. I honestly despise everything that the Confederacy stood for. When I see that battle flag, it fills me with rage. Rage that a symbol synonymous with the subjugation of people who look like me can even be printed, let alone displayed and celebrated in public. That is how I feel about it point blank period. Symbols matter. But I can't carry around hatred in my heart for those who feel the need to hold on to any part of that legacy. This is simply an aspect of culture for which I have no bridge to offer them. I am for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And sadly, the definition of truth can often be jaundiced by the lived cultural experiences of a person or a group of people. I see the antebellum South as one of the worst eras of trampling of human rights that this nation has ever seen. Someone else may see it as the height of Southern culture and accomplishment. I don't see where the middle ground is for that type of diametrical opposition. But what I can respect is what helped me on my path to healing that day. And that was seeing both Union and Confederate losses and sacrifices were honored and memorialized in the park. The same thing had been present at Pea Ridge, but I, it just didn't hit me the same way at the time. I applaud the staffs of both Pea Ridge and Prairie Grove Parks for placing the emphasis on telling the whole story 
of the two conflicts, not one side only. The one side only feeling is what kept me away from many of these monuments. I'm an African American. I've heard all kinds of stories about the kinds of gatherings that happen in Confederate cemeteries. I've heard all kinds of stories about places where African Americans are not welcome after sunset. There is truth and grounding in many of these things. What I know though is that we cannot progress forward if everyone holds on to these ideas. We need to tell the truth, the whole truth, so that those who are willing can experience the healing that's waiting for them. Because when it comes down to it, there is one truth that binds us together, and it's that we are all citizens of the United States of America. Thank you so much for coming along on this adventure with me today. We're going to have a whole lot of fun in season two, so be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you will not miss when I upload new videos. And this is Ticket Talking Maza for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. And this is Ticket Talking Maza for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. I'm a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it, get it, get it. Comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. And this is Ticket Talking Maza for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. I'm a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it, get it, get it. Comma and a comma. Gotta